Okay. So now, students, we are going to utilize this simple box as our example of an object that we're going to use. Just a simpler example, rather than using the truck with the wheels and the mirrors and all of these complex uh, components. I'm just going to use a simple box. Now, if you notice that this box is not a cube, it's a simple box because of the difference in the different sides, difference in measurements. So, we're going to use this box. So, let me use this dustless chalk labeled section as the front elevation. If viewed from that, from at 90 degrees, if you're looking at the object at 90 degrees, this is what you'll actually see. And this is what you'll actually see. If you look at the object from the side, which is an end elevation, this is what you'll actually see. Now notice that the measurements are different. See that? And if we should be with the opposite side, this is what we'll actually see. Similar to that side. And if you would from the top, we'll actually go ahead now and draw. And notice how the objects actually correlate. These are similar in height. All elevations are similar in height. And for the front elevation as well as the plan, they are going to be similar in width. Okay. So as I was saying now, the, these are similar in, in dimensions as relates to their height. So elevations are similar in height and your front elevation as well as your plan are going to be similar in width. So I'm just going to go ahead and label it. So that is our plan. This is our front elevation. This is our right end elevation. And this is our left in elevation. Is that clear? Now, with these views now, we can go ahead now and put this in isometric for it to make more sense for us to get a full object. Alright? So, for isometric, we need boundaries. We need boundaries because with isometric, you cannot view the object outside of these boundaries. So, we're going to have to establish the boundaries first. Alright? So we're going to draw a horizontal line, a vertical line, and then we're going to put in the, the boundaries using our 60-30 degree set square. So we're just going to draw a line at 30 degrees coming from here, the lines intersect. We're going to spin over here. You know how to use the set squares, right? Good. Just like that. We're just going to spin this over. Alright. And these now will indicate the boundaries of our isometry. Projection. So, in a sense, when viewing an object in isometry, these are the boundaries that you are actually viewing the object in. You cannot see outside of these boundaries. So, after like your vision, your line of sight, you cannot see beyond a certain point. You will have a dark spot or a blind spot, as it is called. So, consider these as the two blind spots. So, your object must fall within. Now, we are going to select from this now our front elevation. So our front elevation is going to come from this low point and we're going to move it up to here. Let us just select that point. Let me say this is, let me use a 20 to make it easier. So the, the length of this line is 20. We're going to use the height, we're going to use the height as 10. So you can mark these off with your set squares. You can go ahead and mark these off with your set squares. So the height is 10. And the length is 20. So all you're going to have to do is to draw lines parallel, parallel, parallel lines to the already established lines. So we're going to draw a line parallel, a vertical line that is parallel to this line. And we're going to draw another line that is parallel to the previous 30 degree line. And that will give you our front elevation. Notice that it is not, we are not viewing the object at 90 degrees, so you're not going to see a straight object like that. You're not going to see a straight object like that. It is going to be somewhat crooked, but you will still understand that that is the front. Now, we are going to measure our end elevation. So end elevation is almost half the width of the arm, the front elevation based on our drawing there. So we're just going to put a line here. You see that? That one, we're going to repeat the process of drawing a line 
parallel to the next vertical line and we're going to draw another one parallel to the other line that is there diagonal line that is there and these are going to always be at 30 degrees so, so in a sense we have now our end elevation so we have our front elevation we have our end elevation and in order to get the plan which is at the top all we need to do now is to draw more parallel lines so if you notice this line is parallel to this this line parallel to this and all these vertical lines are parallel to each other so we want to create the other side over here so we're going to draw it from these, this corner where the two lines intersect where these two lines intersect that is where the corner is we're going to draw a line just draw a long line parallel so you notice that one, two, three of these lines are parallel now we also need one, two, three lines that are parallel, vertical lines and we also need another line so we have one here, one here, we need another one from this corner where these two lines intersect alright and that will actually represent the plan of our object so we have our front elevation here our end elevation here and this from above is the plan so you'll notice now with this projection, this isometric projection, it allows you now to get a basic idea of what the entire object looks like. Is that understood? So you start the like you are buying a, 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 a car, you are buying a car or a shoe online, you notice know that person tend to want a, 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 a three-dimensional view for you to be better able to appreciate the appearance of this object that you're buying. So I'm just gonna brighten, go ahead now and brighten these so that you're better able now to see our object. Note well that these lines must be parallel to each other. These vertical lines must be parallel to each other. And the diagonal lines now coming from this side must be parallel to each other. We have, we have um, easily done our drawing of an object, an object in isometric, isometric projection. Remember that it is isometric projection. Now, none of your object must fall outside of these lines. None of your object must fall outside of these lines. I can go ahead and remove some of this, but you leave them in construction lines when you're drawing. Those will be construction lines and these blue lines will represent the outline of our object. Note well, my students, um, that this is a simple isometric box. It's a very, very simple, simple isometric um, figure. And every figure that you will get as of now would be more complex, but the principle would remain the same. So I'm just going to put out some dimensions on this for you to go ahead and um, and do an assignment, just do a little practice. So practice work. So this is one dimension line. So we'll place another one here. For you to be able to draw your object. Is that clear? And um, I'm gonna also want this. Get an object itself, and when we 
we stood in the, um, the topic of orthography, we are going to now be given isometric views of objects and we are now going to be asked now to take from the isometric um, three-dimensional view these two-dimensional views which is back to, to, to um, orthography. Is that clear? Alright.